Schubert Ákos. Hi there, this is our last presentation before lunch. Ákos Schubert is going to um, deliver the presentation. Don't be misled by his young age because he's really experienced. Uh, he went to the European Championship in Beijing. Um, he was anyway. Uh, they had a uh, second, fourth, and sixth place, and he is going to talk about uh, the uh, security shortfalls in Hungary. So, Akos, the floor is yours. Warm welcome to all of you, and uh, thank you very much uh, for the uh, introduction. What I'd like to talk about today is that uh, in Hungary, what sort of uh, security uh, shortfalls you can meet, uh, which for us lock pickers is rather apparent, but there are certain people here who would not uh, really use these shortfalls and shortcomings as they should. Why we need to talk about this? Well, on the one hand, we need to talk about this because uh, the uh, uh, lock picking and the uh, uh, burglary statistics are quite high in Hungary. Going around in the buildings and in the uh, uh, streets, you can see that people are not using quality uh, locks and quality uh, solutions. This is partly due to the fact that they do not get the right uh, information about what is quality and what is not quality. Uh, quite often, not even uh, uh, the stores, uh, lock stores, know what they can and should um, suggest an offer and what they shouldn't. And the third thing is that which is quite interesting, by the way, is that, uh, let me just say that uh, I'm also into uh, locks, so I'm also installing locks, and what I see is people don't like to spend on security, and we know that in real life there are things that are bad, but every good thing, uh, the good things are not cheap, they are not going to be cheap. And day by day, I see people coming in asking for the cheapest, the simplest, saying that, okay, they are not going to break into this house anyway. And due to this mentality as well, the burglary statistics in Hungary uh, is just showing an increasing trend. And let's see uh, what uh, the shortfalls are uh, that really affect these statistics. Now, one is that uh, we use cheap locks, and these cheap locks, from a lock picking point of view, are, do not have the protection, the right protective capability uh, that would protect you against opening up. Most of the breaking up is uh, using force, it's intrusive violence, so they break the window, they break the door. Uh, and only very uh, small percentage is the unintrusive um, method. And probably they are using that because they need no time to open up that lock. And of course, uh, the burglar doesn't want to be there. So if there is uh, a higher security lock, even a lock picker cannot tell you how, how uh, fast and how quick he can he open the lock. But whenever they see a, a simple lock, uh, they would just say one minute and it's going to be open. Now let's talk about lock picking uh, for those who were not here last year. Here we can see the schematic, uh, the schematic uh, the scheme of a, a cylinder lock, uh, this is about uh, a certain uh, cylinder which is going to uh, turn and open uh, the, the lock. And what really matters is that we can also see uh, the pins, the closing pins. And when the right key with the right cut is put into the uh, lock in such a way that the pin pairs are uh, standing in such a way that uh, the uh, that uh, the line between them or the gap between them uh, is uh, just uh, between uh, the uh, lamel and the cylinder then you can just open uh, your door now if it's not the right key then it may happen as you can see that in the second position 
one or even more pins uh, will not be uh, pushed down and therefore there is there will still be a, a pin uh, preventing uh, the turning of uh, the cylinder that is opening the lock that could be a too high cut a key with a too high cut or it could be a key with a too low cut uh, which would uh, press the pin out but would also uh, press uh, the pin of the cylinder into the house and therefore it again would prevent uh, the uh, cylinder from turning. Now the upper chart uh, shows you a lock picking tools. Uh, I just try to select the ones that are used uh, for uh, rating technique. You can see that they are shaped in such a way that if you put them into the uh, lock and uh, move them uh, back and forth, uh, you can uh, test a lot of different combinations. Uh, basically, we are mimicking uh, the shape of uh, the fine cat, the uh, uh, appropriately cut key. This is the technique you can see there. You see, you just move it uh, back and forth and a bit up and down. Uh, so this is how you move it. And then you will have a uh, fair chance that you will uh, sort of uh, um, hit the code, which is going to open the lock, to put it this way. And then I just collected a couple of uh, uh, photos from police.hu. Uh, internet portal of the Hungarian National Police. Now, what you can, we can, let's look at the tools. Uh, these are all raid um, equipment or tools and also an, ele an ele electric opener. Uh, now, these are all tools uh, mimicking or giving you the ability to use the same technique. And this is good because uh, the cheap um, locks uh, with uh, uh, low security profile and uh, 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 being cheap with low uh, security profile, uh, these could be easily opened. And as I said, the burglar doesn't want to spend 15 minutes in front of a door uh, trying to get in. But if they see a cheap lock uh, with high, to with, uh, uh, high tolerance, uh, then they are going to try. They are going to give it a try. And even if someone has a uh, uh, an assurance, uh, an insurance policy, then the insurer is not going to pay the insurance company because quite often uh, you, they will not be able to uh, spot that there was the, the, the house was broken in. Uh, although uh, there are, there is a, a, a branch of science, uh, actually a discipline dealing with uh, uh, the traces left by such uh, tools, but uh, uh, the Hungarian experts normally cannot make a difference. Now here we can see a, a number of cheap locks. Uh, the Chinese uh, security locks and security doors and the Chinese lock. Uh, now, there is only one common in these, uh, is that uh, the the uh, uh, lock picking uh, tool in the right hand corner uh, opens all of them. Now we have the Chinese padlocks. The Chinese padlocks have a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, what you can see in the photo is uh, that uh, you use a a wire, a piece of wire, and then uh, you just replace the key by that wire and you just start attacking uh, the uh, the pin within the padlock, uh, which uh, uh, will uh, allow you to turn around the cylinder. But in these padlocks, uh, they did not put an extra, um, an extra piece of metal into the padlock so that w they w that would prevent the putting in uh, of, uh, of those uh, uh, mock keys. Now, the shimming technique is also uh, based on the same principle uh, that you just again um, press in a piece of metal sheet into the uh, keyhole and then in, uh, in seconds you just open the padlock. And this is my favorite. Oh in hobby and uh, do-it-yourself and the bricolage stores and a lot of places. Uh, they're, they're offering you um, discount security doors, 50,000 foreigns, uh, that is 200 euros uh, uh, with uh, installation. And then uh, my neighbor came to me saying, I, went, I, I just purchased a very good security door. It was only 50,000 foreigns. If we 
um, deduct uh, the cost of install installing because, of course, uh, that, uh, that also has a price. You just uh, deduct uh, the VAT, the customs, uh, the, uh, tra the uh, uh, transport costs, and also the uh, margin of the trader. Um, then you will get to practically nil, and this is uh, what will give you the quality of the door. Uh, on the internet, you have a video on YouTube. Um, if you, I think it's Chinese beautiful security door um, on YouTube, and then it's a five years old um, girl uh, opening uh, such a security door with uh, a hairpin. Now. This is uh, the cylinder padlock that is cylinder lock that is in uh, that door. Uh, they say it's magnetic, but it's not. Uh, it is a normal seven pin uh, lock. And we can see that this is really bricolage. Okay, it's like. And um, I wanted to uh, go and look inside that lock to see uh, what the technique, the manufacturing technique was. I think that uh, they can, they just used a uh, um, firestone or a, a rotating saw. Uh, actually, I saw no, no uh, straight lines within the uh, structure itself. And I suggest that if you have such a door, you just replace that door immediately, okay? Because this is not that bad in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, because it's sometimes difficult, difficult to open even with the uh, proper key because uh, it, it, is, it is not a precise uh, uh, structure. But first, sooner or later, you are just going to lock yourself out of your own apartment uh, because uh, it will just uh, break down. Now, there is another notion which in Hungarian uh, public speech is used, uh, which is called the lock comb. And what is this? When we go anywhere, they are always keep asking us, do you have a lock comb? Let's look at what a lock comb is. It's really like a comb. But um, um, according to its uh, proper function, it is not the pin positions that you will uh, set and manipulate this way. But through uh, the key channel, you will just hold all of the pins, uh, both the cylinder pins and the house pin, and then all of them, you press them into the house into the house and then uh, no pin will be left there and you can uh, turn the cylinder uh, this is a one second uh, instantaneous opening technique but this technique has been uh, barred out by the uh, manufacturers because they realize that they need to put in uh, pin pairs which pin pairs even we, which pin pairs are longer even if the spring is uh, pressed suppressed and then you cannot use this technique uh, there is also a manufacturing standard which i don't know by heart, but I know uh, that the Chinese don't know the notion of uh, manufacturing uh, standards. Therefore, this uh, is still um, manufactured in such a way that the technique works properly everywhere. And then there is another uh, lock, which is the AZ-200. Uh, no, the AZ uh, double key, uh, which uh, used to be considered to be one of the best. I would just like to present to you that it's a piece of crap. I just gave uh, one of these logs to my Croatian friend, to this Croatian friend of mine, and I said, uh, try it, because I'm, I'm a lock picker, but you should try it. Uh, he, was a, he was a beginner uh, practitioner, let me put it this way. And then next day, I got an email from him titled Easy Picking. And it was about, uh, it was showing you the following video. You can see that there is a... Uh, you can see that there is a key which is not yet cut, an uncut key, a virgin key, and it opens the lock. And at the email, he said, <laughs> but thank you. That was the end of the mail. Now, let's also um, talk about the possible or potential protection. Um, what the 
manufacturers try to apply in order to uh, protect from these techniques. Now, this is, if you look at the uh, uh, lock, and this is what you see, this is the key profile. It's an easy key profile. You can use a tool easily uh, to get through, and that gives you the opportunity. But uh, in this picture, you can see uh, the monster. This is what we call the monster. You can see that uh, you cannot really manipulate it. You cannot go. Uh, you cannot push in an object or a uh, or anything into it, which uh, is a good protection in itself. Uh, but there is only one problem here. And the problem is that due to the lot of small um, angles, it is not usable. And the reason it's not usable is because if you're not inserting the key properly, you just apply some tension, uh, then it is going to bend, and tomorrow it's not going to open, and tomorrow you will not be able to use it. So I just suggest something uh, simpler, more simple than this. Now the, uh, the other one, the other protection against picking, is the use of security pins. Now, these security pins, is that uh, the person who tries to pick it should feel that is, or the pins are already on the, uh, on, uh, properly positioned, but not. That's not the case. You can see the different uh, lamels here. Uh, they have uh, different uh, um, feelings, but it give you, gives you the impression as if they were already positioned properly, but it, they are not positioned properly, and that uh, would prevent a, a fine opening. Now, the other solution is the so-called sidebar. You see, it's not only the pin that is there, but also there is a sidebar, as its name says, and that sidebar also needs to uh, be positioned in order to make the cylinder turnable. Next one. This is the multi-lock type of, uh, uh, this is used by Multilock Interactive. This is uh, the pin in the pin, or bar in the bar, uh, where it is not uh, one pair of pins, but there is another pair of pins within uh, the uh, first pair of pins, and this uh, could significantly uh, make uh, the uh, fine picking difficult. And stepping back to Chinese, uh, they actually made a tool uh, that uh, worked quite well with this multi-lock, and then uh, the manufacturer said, well, okay, uh, let's just uh, change the characteristic. But the Chinese realized that uh, uh, that that key worked very well, and therefore they uh, uh, patented it, and I think this was the first ever patent. Now, the other the other problem is that uh, these uh, cheap uh, padlocks do not protect against destructive techniques. So if you want to drill it, uh, then you can just drill it. Uh, the new ones are protected with uh, uh, hard metal parts so that you could not uh, uh, drill them easily. But the cheap ones do not have that type of protection. Uh, or if they have that type of protection, uh, it is just, uh, you know, an egg, uh, uh, it is just for uh, the sake of marketing and nothing else. Uh, they do not resist uh, uh, tension applied. They not, do not resist drilling. Uh, I also saw instances when they just uh, press in uh, a knife or a just uh, a straight piece of metal and they were able to turn it. A good example to the uh, destructive opening is the so-called um, disc detainer padlock, Chinese disc detainer padlock, uh, which they copied from someone else's padlock. And there are um, uh, padlocks uh, rotating and uh, rotating padlocks uh, ensuring the closing and the opening. Now, August, which is a German qualitative uh, quality producer, can be opened more easily uh, with the uh, with the tool, the picking tool that is there, than this one with the with its own picking tool. Uh, the August is much more refined. It's a, a, a much more refined. There's a lot of uh, uh, it's refined uh, uh, technique. However, uh, this uh, is more safe, is safer, or more secure, rather. But there's something they forgot 
about, and that is the fact that it's, it looks to it, it appears to be quite massive, but they um, forgot to think of something. That is to put the uh, discs into a plastic housing, and then uh, this element can be very easily uh, displaced with a screwdriver. And once you uh, once you shake out the discs, you can simply open uh, the the lock. Another great problem that I am confronted with every day is the wrong installation of uh, the locks. And of course, wrong installation uh, actually provides even more opportunities for uh, those attempting to break in than the actual uh, production quality problems. I'm sure you've heard about cylinder snapping that uh, the lock insert was uh, actually snapped. The above pictures actually have one thing in common. It takes a minute to actually snap the inserts, the locks. On the first one, you see there's absolutely no protection around the lock. The second one shows that there is this sort of uh, a covering label on the but it is actually fitted with screws from the outside, therefore all you need to do is unscrew it. The third one shows a more professional uh, shield, but there you can see that the lock actually budges out, comes out a bit, protrudes. How can you actually break uh, the cylinder? If you actually complete do a, br a blown out picture of the lock, what you see is that the two, uh, it's two very, very uh, narrow, thin metal elements that join the two parts of the lock, and this is a quite a weak spot. So basically, if it actually protrudes enough that you actually hold it with a special vice or with something else, and you move it left, right, up, down, and try and snap the metal, then it is very easily easy to snap. And the moment you've removed uh, it, you basically just take a thin wire and then pull uh, the uh, lock mechanism aside. Uh, and then, of course, it happens if you're burgled, this is what you get to see. A few kinds of so-called lock snappers, pictures, there are some special ones. The top two uh, are specially made, designed for lock snapping. The, on the, the ones on the right, the two uh, color ones are actually the work of a locksmith. And what is interesting with these is that it is so thin uh, that even if it does not protrude and it is not protected and it does not even protrude from the surface of the door, he can still break it, he can still hold it. And what is perhaps the most, uh, what is most popular is this so-called Swedish wise, uh, which uses a water pump. Uh, a very nice example for lock uh, or lock snapping, a metal door that I found uh, where you can see a cylinder lock. I think it protruded a good centimeter and a half and I really smiled to myself. And then I read what was on, I read what was on the sticker next to the door, uh, next to the lock. It actually says, warning, the key of the attendance of the filling station cannot open the safe, uh, only the money uh, transportation company can. What kind of solutions do we have uh, to actually prevent this? One technology is to actually have some sort of uh, flexible yet very strong material to link the two parts of the lock. So you can break it, but you cannot pull it out because it will still hold and it will just move 
right and left or uh, back and forth, it is a very good protection, I think. Practically speaking, I think what works to its benefit is that it is universal. And then if we, if you take into account any lock that you can, that is modular, and let's say we move, the new door is, let's say, one centimeter uh, thicker. We can use the old lock. We take it to a locksmith. It ex he extends it one centimeter, and we can still use it. There are some cylinders where you you have a perforation, and if and if someone attempts to break it. It will not break where uh, the screw is, the front will break off, and from then on you cannot hold, uh, gra grasp it. Or another possibility, uh, they invented it with an English uh, product. They have included such a protection that basically, instead of a screw fixing it, it is a hard metal. Uh, uh, that is actually securing it. You can still break it out, half of it, but the whole clutch structure is actually uh, fixed to the inside part. So if you break out the external part, you cannot have access because the clutch the cl mechanism will still be there, will still obstruct. And in, in addition to this, there is an internal cam fixed to the inner side and that basically renders the whole lock uh, useless. Uh, you will not have access to the lock mechanism. And of course there will be so cylinders that combine this, so the front part is perforated, uh, hardened metal used, and the side also has a hardened uh, protruding part so that you cannot uh, actually uh, go in on the sides. What other things can we do to protect against lock snapping? Of course, a good uh, cover, a good shield, because if uh, we buy a good lock in Hungary, that is quite an expensive endeavor. We put it into a door that has a normal, uh, simple aluminium handle and the cover. They might, they might not be able to come in, but we might be forced to buy a new lock. So this is why we uh, suggest uh, the installation of a so-called protective, very simple protective shield, which basically uh, uh, does not allow. Now, this is actually fixed uh, from the inside, therefore you cannot see it from the outside. Uh, this is probably the most basic um, protection uh, of the lock uh, cylinder. Now, if you put this, if you, you install this, then this is going to be quite close to the edge of the rim of the door, and therefore uh, it is going to make it dif more difficult uh, for the uh, uh, intruder, uh, for the intruder, uh, to use uh, different tools uh, to break the door, uh, to use a crowbar or a pinch bar. Now those who are not really skilled to look into uh, the lock cylinder and see uh, what is inside, uh, that could be actually a bit less certain whether this is a significant uh, or a simpler uh, lock. So this gives you gives an incognito, ensures an incognito for the lock. Uh, which is good because uh, no specific techniques uh, could be uh, searched uh, because normally people are looking for special techniques uh, uh, to open uh, the and it's also uh, it's also uh, safe against uh, uh, snapping what you can see here is the so-called drum gemini protective shield uh, or the Drum Gemini uh, protective shield, which is already a complex uh, closed system. And you need a separate key to open the shield in order to have access to the, uh, to the cylinder. 
uh, this is the our protect uh, that is uh, combined with that it is combined with which is uh, not uh, known to be openable through uh, picking lock picking now the lock plug pulling is also a well-known technique and you can see uh, some of these uh, techniques uh, uh, that you can see there and the point of the technique is that you have a you you just uh, in uh, screw in a, a screw or a bolt and then you just start pulling it out and if we think about uh, how the what the diameter of the pins is, because this is two to three uh, uh, millimeters uh, made of uh, uh, copper or any soft other soft metal. So when it's open with a key, then it's always uh, just a protective ring that keeps it there. So if you pull it quite hard, uh, then uh, we just uh, cut off those pins. Uh, those pins are cut off by the cylinder being pulled out. And this is uh, the result that you can see here. Uh, this has been open, uh, taken out from a dome uh, lock plug. And then uh, you can see uh, actually the plug opened. So uh, it is wise or advisable to have such a, a protective shield that would uh, prevent from lock plug pulling as well. And of course, uh, if you look at the Chinese quality, you don't always need uh, the puller to uh, pull the plug. And let's also talk about uh, what could give uh, an opportunity to uh, try to break into your apartment. Uh, we could see the lock in this door. This is 700 lock and uh, this has an approximately 2.5 centimeter um, of uh, lock lamo, 22 millimeters is out of the uh, rim, so I'm not going to risk it, but I think you just need to apply a bigger push or a hit, or if you have a saw in with you, then you can do it immediately. In five minutes, uh, uh, you can have marvelous results. The right side, you have a basically a metal grill that was protecting the roof of a building that you shouldn't be allowed to go out to the roof, which is okay. It would have been a problem if it protects actually a home, because you can see there's absolutely no protection, uh, any sort of cover, any shield. Uh, it's a simple LZ lock. The real problem is that when they installed it, they forgot to actually cover it. So practically speaking, if you look from the side, all you need is a, piece, a, a wire, a metal wire, and just uh, open the tongue of the lock uh, that would otherwise uh, be operated with the lock mechanism. I'm sure you've seen uh, the other kind of security lock the real quality Mishkolts made uh, cheaper, the cheapest for the customer. Of course, most of the cases uh, uh, when they install these, uh, they forget to tell the customers that these are really bad quality. So if you have uh, uh, the old type uh, of uh, cylinder in your lock, change it. But uh, you can see the problem that the lock is installed right above, right above uh, the male opening slot. You have four screws holding this in place. You basically all you have to do is take it off, and if you have a thinner hand, you can actually you can actually just move, put your hand in through the slot, 
This is what happened once the, the painter actually painted everything on the door, every single thing, and basically we had to liberate uh, the door from the hardened paint. And of course we used it uh, on this lock. It's basically took off uh, the mail uh, covering. I unscrewed the lock and pushed the whole thing inside. Perhaps a bit better and more suggested solution. In apartment blocks they don't have these mail openings anymore, it's only spam that's coming through it anyway. Uh, uh, mailboxes are located at the entrance, so if you want to install uh, this kind of a lock, the first thing you have to do is actually, first of all, uh, do away with the mail slot opening. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'd like to ask you, you can try lockpicking and other interesting things during our uh, workshop.